Hello again, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, today I have, have titled this, this episode um, The Keep Renovations 2021, but actually they're not all in the keep. I thought it would be really fun to tell you about what we have been doing um, in lockdown and, and get over to the keep now quickly because this is the wonderful before shot because the keep is chaos and there's so much work going on there and then in, in a month or two's time we can have the after photo um, and show you how much we've achieved. So when I was busy inside, Jace was frantically busy outside and um, making use of the fact that there were no visitors here and what he did is really quite incredible because he has cleared all the old dead trees and essentially the hedge that was surrounding the bailey, leaving these lovely trees actually now visible and has created the most amazing views of Essex from this, from this site. And also, of course, by default, creating incredible views of this iconic building from the village and beyond. Here we are in the garrison floor and uh, we've got Jace with us now. And he, <laughs> he is the most versatile husband ever which is very handy because um, he can turn his hand to basically everything that anyone needs that needs to happen. Um, so because we had this um, uh, downtime, which I think is quite an awful euphemism for deadly quiet, um, we had the opportunity to re-floor this floor. And the problem with this, this floor was that it has got a bit thin. Yeah, it, um, the, the floor put in the 1920s after the fire got really thin because of over sanding. So uh, the disco, which uh, is over there where everyone dances, is getting a little bit thin and we didn't want anyone to fall through. So we've been hoarding a lot of um, reclaimed timber off South End Pier over the years. It's and this, great, isn't yeah. it? The, um, the, the sustainability aspect of that, I think. Yeah, because the county, yeah. um, South End Council were wanting to get rid of it and we said, well, we'll have loads of it. And we've done the basement in it, we've, done, we've just finished this floor, so we've completely covered 100 square meters to this floor, and now I've got the fun task of filling every single crack <laughs> with sawdust and um, PVA glue. So of course, the whole COVID thing, we were full of, of positive thinking, like everybody else was, during um, the summer, and then it, then, and it really dawned on us that actually there wasn't going to be any chance of getting back to weddings in the autumn. And of course, the autumn then rolled on into the winter, etc. But along came something which really was life-saving, and that was the culture recovery grant. And the amazing thing about that was that it meant that we had the ability to diversify, which, of course, when business is going well, you don't need to do that, do you? And then, and then it all crashes around. Um, and actually, you know, another silver lining is that, of course, it does free up your mind to be a little bit more flexible and think, okay, well, we have this incredible building. What else can we do with it? And so come this way, and this is what we're planning to do. We are planning to have an amazing bedroom in the keep. And um, we're going to let it out for, to people um, to rent. Couples after their weddings can come up here. Um, and it's just going to be incredible. I mean, where else can you sleep in the 900-year-old Norman keep? It's going to be spectacular. On this floor as well, we've also had the opportunity to meet this wonderful man called Anthony, and he does escape rooms. And um, I've never done an escape room. Have you done an escape room? It's such fun. It's absolutely bonkers on many levels. But we did it with our family. It takes an hour, and you have to literally get out, and it's so funny. So Anthony um, was also decimated by COVID, but he had this escape room in his cupboard. And this one is about magic and it you have to solve clues and um, get the potions right and then and then you if you do um, the headmistress then gets out of the um, the cupboard oh the, the picture actually um, which is over there by the cupboard and um, and it was just such fun uh, so it's another way of exploring uh, the castle is a reason to come here and actually of course you can't do the same escape room twice so the next one is going to be about the Magna Carta um, 
and actually under this table in all the mess, this is, this is <laughs> it's not the real Magna Carta, needless to say, it's, it's a, a, a sort of facsimile of it. Um, and it's, it's going to be a way of teaching people about the history of the piece because, of course, in 1215 this piece is huge. And, um, and it's just a fun way of doing that with the family. And now we're going to meet Steve and Graham, who are the amazing people who are working on the windows. And the windows are part of the heritage grant. And so here we have Steve, who <laughs> teamed up. And he has, um, the joiner has, the joiner company has made these um, amazing windows. And now they have to be fitted to the um, existing Norman window arches. So I think if we want serious impact of what this, um, the window replacement is going to be, I think over there, um, at this point where everything is sort of looking like a, a, a you know, a, a mess, um, is what it's going to look like. And the Norman arches of these windows, and we're here we are in the Minstrels Gallery and the Keep, um, are now mimicked by the shape of the window. Before, they were square, like the ones you can see behind me. Um, and, and also, there were, there were sort of um, rather curious triangular sort of shutters that came over the top. They were actually done for the um, production of Ivanhoe that was um, done here in 19, 1990s, I think. Um, and they wanted to have shutters on the windows, and, and they had been left. And the whole thing just looked really clunky and really unfortunate. Um, so this is what we're trying to achieve and we're going to, I'm just going to come in front of you and, and walk down here um, and we'll find out how on earth that happened. Where's Bob gone? Are you there? Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Can I introduce you to Bob? Hello. Um, and Bob is, is, um, has been fixing the windows into place. And then also doing quite a lot of the masonry around the windows. Yes, a lot of flint work and lime repairs. Yeah. So uh, where it's broken away, we're cleaning it out, uh, taking away the dust and making it uh, moist and then uh, replacing it with flints and lime mortar. And then you secure the windows by bedding it into the mortar, don't yes, you? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Yeah. So uh, there's several stages to it of doing one stage at a time so it's different layers yes so building it out because they're quite deep so yeah fantastic and and building it up so that they're going to be in place for another hundred years hope so <laughs> yes yes <laughs> definitely we were, we were just teasing um steve and, and and graham upstairs um so have you had any um ghostly uh, activity while you've been working no, this time no, around no, no, oh no. they've got to try harder these ghosts haven't they <laughs> it's really annoying Oh, yeah, I think oh, should we rouse them up later yeah. and, then and then get them all, okay, get them all here the next week? Okay, you'll have to scare us on another day when yeah, everyone's yeah, getting exactly. dull. So. <laughs> okay. well, that's really fun. Thanks, Bob. Oh, that's right. really of course, the reality of doing things like getting heating in here, which we did in 2015, um, and also now getting uh, bath, water, and heating up to the top floor for the escape room and the bedroom is the reality of hiding all the services. So you have this incredible room, which is the banqueting hall, which is one of the jewels of Norman architecture in Western Europe, and it really is. And within that, we then have to hide the service run. <laughs> and of course, you know, we, when I show you this in, in, in a month or two's time, this will never, you will never see it. There is so much to look at in this building. You will never see what we're going to, what we're going to hide. But we have to have the rainwater pipe and the soil pipe and the um, hot water pipes um, and, and the heating pipes and the electrics for it all. Um, and this will all just go away, uh, which is just one of those magical things about the building process, isn't it? But I just thought I'd show you now so that you can be equal doubly awed when you see the finished product. So, this is one of those projects that we have been desperate to do for, long, for a long time. The um, flints have 
very gently. I mean, these, the, the, there is, of course, no um, indigenous stone in, in Essex. So uh, the whole castle is built out of flint and actually then faced in the Barnack stone, which came from 100 miles away up near, near, um, near Peterborough. But the, um, but the, so the whole, sub, the, the middle of the, the wall in the keep is made of these flints. And what's been happening is that the, um, the lime mortar has been, as you can see there, I don't know whether you can see, if you touch it, it just starts deteriorating, and, and which shouldn't happen. So after a long time, the flints have then been falling out. So Martin Harrington, um, who we'll tell you a bit more about his ancestor in a bit, um, has been um, building up the flints so that they will then have secure lime mortar, so that will never happen again, and then build up this arch, which, as you can see, has completely deteriorated here, which is just so exciting. And he's done this whole alcove already. I don't know whether you can see inside this, but this, you can now touch the, the, the ceiling, and it stays firm. It's so exciting. And it means that for the next 900 years, this arch will remain as built now. And that is a really, really important thing. And thanks to the grant, we have been able to get on with this work, which of course is, is, is one of those very, very expensive things that you never quite get round to. Upstairs, I'm going to show you an amazing bit of graffiti, <laughs> which Martin's um, ancestor did. But I'll tell you about that when we go up. So the amazing thing is that um, we don't often have incredible builders' lights like this up here, obviously, so this, this is always quite a dark place. And because this light was here, Jason was walking past it and saw that it says Cornelius Harrington here. Now, obviously, if I decided to write my name in the Shredder Lynch Monument, I think the minimum penalty is three months in prison. <laughs> but luckily, Cornelius did it before the rules applied. So uh, that's good. Uh, and, and Martin, I might add, is a very upstanding member of our community and he is a farmer, so he's also not going to be um, carrying on the family tradition of, of graffiti. Uh, even Banksy would be put in prison for three months, just saying, just in case he's interested. I think we've got the bit between our teeth, which we certainly have. Um, but the uh, sometimes, as, as we say, you know, this great aunt of ours, this amazing structure, sometimes tells us what to do next. And this is a really good case in point. Because above the front door here, we have a section of wall that is extraordinary. And the history of it is unclear. Um, we think that there used to be a doorway out here onto the flat roof of the floor building in which we are standing. But in fact, um, the walls, as you can see, have gone at this point. However, um, what are we going to do with this wall? It's not in good nick, and recently um, the stones have been blowing off. You know, there's, there's something that's happened that water has got in, and the surface of the stone has been blown off and so it needs repair so of course you know <laughs> everything being everything we can't afford to do that at the moment so we are now praying to find the next wonderful grant or something to get that um get this fixed because it's um it's a real problem even the cherry picker to do the work costs 600 pounds a day so you know it's 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 really quite frightening how much these things cost and of course the other thing about working on a schedule ancient monument is that um, everything you do, you need to have an archaeologist there with you just to make sure that it's being recorded and analysed in the correct fashion. So that's our first next challenge and I'm going to show you our next next challenge. Just come with me. So this is the remains of the Tudor Tower. There's very little um, remaining of the Tudor element of the castle. And um, this tower used to be the residential tower. So it had the Lord's bedroom and the ladies' bedroom in here. And it used to resemble um, the, the front tower of Hampton Court. Or in Essex, you know, there's a very similar tower at Laomani. Um, 
and it would have been really quite fantastic. And it has these um, these sort of octagonal circles here, which are probably the um, the bottom of the spiral staircase, maybe. And then there's extraordinary walls. And um, just have to be careful about how I clamber around on it. Um, it was preserved perfectly um, under the undergrowth. And then, of course, as Jace was sorting out the hedge that was that was carrying on. Um, you know, a little bit like anchor what, <laughs> with all the roots growing over it and these, these trees basically destroying it because all their roots were pulling through the brickwork. It was time to, actually having discovered it, it's time to, to sort it out. So we want to make sure that we um, preserve the brickwork and stop it from falling off. And I don't know when that happened, but it could have been 100 years ago. Um, and obviously up here, there's more that's fallen off. So this is a, a big restoration work that um, needs to be done with an archaeologist and lots of patience. Um, but it would be rather incredible to have it because this is the last remaining, other than the, the incredible um, Tudor Bridge, but this is the last remaining element of the Tudor Castle. Okay, so what we've done today is removed the door frame, which is pretty exciting. It's the first time we've ever seen it like this. Um, this is the old frame uh, from uh, possibly the pub in the village, the Blue Ball we think it's called, put in probably after the fire in the 1920s. For the first time here you can see the incredible slot for the portcullis, which is much more in evidence because the frame's gone and we've got a modestly sized new door frame to come in with the new doors, which is pretty amazing, which is sitting in here. idea of the scale. It's quite big. And some of this is oak from a local tree, um, which is rather wonderful. The, what do you call this, the heart? Threshold. Threshold. And then this is made up, I don't know where this oak's come from, but it's lovely. And then the door, which is over there, is made up of planks from a tree that was felled a couple of years ago locally. So it's all very uh, sustainable. Oh, nothing like a whistle-stop tour of 900 years of history. Actually, I'm quite looking forward to my tea now because it's quite chilly outside. Um, so it just gives you a glimpse as to what goes on behind the scenes in these incredible buildings and houses and how it's all hands on deck and how the team starts here, which is just great fun. And we're jolly lucky to have all those people around us helping and the ability to do it as well. If you wanted to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can, and you can also find out a lot more about Headingham at the same time. There is so much to tell here. 900 years of utterly fascinating facts. <laughs> Quite scary ones too. We're gonna to be talking about ghost stories and all the bits of history that, you know, some bits are quite gruesome, some bits aren't. Lots of nuggets of, of all the bits that we've been doing to Heading as well over the time. But it'd be really nice to see you soon. I hope you enjoyed today. Bye-bye.